My brother is a very hardworking man, and at 27 he is now very wealthy and doing well for himself. He's been with this girl for six months and throughout the time we have gotten close because we both like hair, makeup, and shopping. I never knew there was anything wrong with our relationship, except when she texted me last week I saying she would love to hang out, but thinks it'll be inappropriate because her and my brother broke up. I asked her why, and she said she was sick and tired of auditioning to prove she was with him for the right reasons. She went on to say that my brother is paranoid she's after his money, so he would test her like, one, leaving out his bank statements on their bed and getting upset when she picked it up, two, going out to eat at high-end restaurants he requested and leaving his wallet on home at purpose to make her pay the bill and prove she's not going out with him for money, three, never buying her gifts and questioning her when she asks why he doesn't. I was shocked so I had to hear my brother's perspective. We spoke and he told me everything she said was true and that there's nothing wrong with making sure his girlfriend is with him for the right reasons. He said he left his bank statements on the bed and was peeking through the door to see if she would be curious and when he saw her pick up the papers he knew in his gut she was using him for his money so he set up the restaurant idea to see if she would get upset at paying a $500 bill which she was. I asked him if he thinks her being an elementary school teacher could have contributed to her being upset at a $500 bill at a restaurant he wanted to go to and he said no. He said the straw that broke was when she asked him why he hasn't bought her a single gift since they've started dating, when she bought him a gaming console and new rims for his car and he knew she was just discreetly asking him to buy her an expensive gift. He confronted her and said he thinks she's with him for his money, so she said, let me do us both a favor and dumped him and blocked him. He's upset about the gold digging idiot and when I laughed he called me an idiot. He said I would never understand what it's like being a rich man and being used and I get that concern, but I told him if he thinks any woman will be okay with his tests and auditions he's delusional as hell. If he doesn't want to be used for his money he should start dating people as wealthy as him or leave lower income people alone if he's not going to be genuine in his relationships unless they pass his test. Not the idiot. Those tests are so stupid and prove nothing. One. If I saw papers on my bed, I'm gonna look at them and see what they are. 2. If I was invited to a restaurant that I don't want to go to and was told they'd pay for it and last moment made me pay for it, I would be pissed too. Especially being a teacher and having to pay $500 for a dinner I didn't want. 3. Giving gifts are a common thing in relationships, they don't have to be expensive. He had no problem accepting her gifts. Also, I'm 100% sure he purposely ordered crap ton of things to increase the bill. Your brother isn't gonna find a girl with that attitude. He sound like a horrible person and he's gonna go around thinking the reason why he's single is cause he's rich and every girl is a gold digger. Literally blame everyone except for himself. Not the idiot. Your brother is allowed to feel insecure or worry that someone might be with him for the wrong reasons and not truly love him for him because you're allowed to feel whatever you feel, but he is not allowed to play mind games with his loved ones or put them through tests to prove their love or loyalty to him. That's incredibly toxic and I'd go so far as to say emotionally abusive behavior. Your brother needs therapy stat and probably a long break from relationships while he figures himself out. I'm a teacher and I married a man with significantly more money than me. Probably not as wealthy as OP's brother, but not badly off. Whilst he says one of the thing he found attractive about me was my sense of financial independence, he never ever tested me like that. He just liked it that I offered to pick up the bill occasionally and would happily buy a round in the pub. He always covered nice treats as otherwise, we wouldn't have them. It's all turned around in these strange times as we found ourselves in a country where English teachers are desperately needed and his company is struggling to stay afloat. OP's brother's behavior is psychotic and misogynistic and suggests that there's something deeply wrong with him. I suspect that he will be a very lonely man. So, I, 18, have a thing going on with my group of friends for pretty much all of high school, that we hang out on Sunday evenings at someone's house, the hosts change week to week, whoever is able to host that week. Anyways the agreed upon thing was that we all chip in like $5 for food, usually pizza and stuff. Some gave more if someone else was in a rough spot and it always works fine. 
One friend Carla's, 18, parents own a pretty successful restaurant, so they like to cook, rather than just order pizza which is great on its own, we all still chip in $5 or so for ingredients. The problem that happened is the dad who likes to cook doesn't take criticism well and always make something I either can't eat due to allergies, or just am not into. I stopped joining in and chipping in money when they would host, so I wasn't a letdown for a while. I had definitely been as clear as an awkward girl can be about what my issues and allergies were. My family has never been very wealthy, and well we ended up homeless for a while, so the hangout nights became a night I could eat something special without worrying too much, plus my friends were always great about sending me back with leftovers if they could. So Sunday I decided to join in on the meal at Carla's house again. I gave money for it per usual. It turned out to once again be something I'm allergic to. I wanted to cry because essentially I wasted $5 that I could have used. Not wanting to confront them about getting the money back or being a party pooper, I ate some. Now the allergy wasn't anaphylactic, but I broke out in hives, my face was very red and swollen. I took some Benadryl and was as discreet as possible, but my one friend Alex, 17, noticed and asked if I was okay, so I kinda casually mentioned it. Suddenly the room exploded. Some people were concerned for me saying I shouldn't have to do that. Carla got very upset and went to tell her dad who came in and asked me why I didn't just not eat it, to which I replied, I didn't want to be a burden or waste my $5. He grabbed $5 and gave it to me, telling me not to eat there again. Carla was upset I embarrassed her dad. Two more friends told me I was being an attention seeker, and someone else told me I ruined nights at Carla's house. So, am I the idiot? I didn't want this to happen at all, and I don't want to lose my friends. Folks are being really aggressive to OP who is only 18 and dealing with homelessness and food insecurity. Like yeah, you could have handled that dinner better, and eating something you knew would give you a reaction is stupid, but based on your comments, I understand why you were anxious and panicking about wasting money on food you can't eat. You're worth more than risking your health to smooth over a situation, it sounds like this was the general logic, and I'm sorry you felt and feel like you're not. His reaction to you saying you ate it to avoid being a burden should have been met with compassion, I understand the general uproar out of concern for your health, but he was extremely rude to you. I don't really want to give a judgement because I don't think you're blameless, but I also don't think you're an idiot. Of course not. You neither accused a dad of poisoning you, nor made a big deal out of it. They did. Of course, it wasn't the brightest thing to do to eat something you knew you were allergic to, but it's your health you're playing with. I guess her dad is just worried that next time it could be worse, and he'd be responsible for serious health issues. Don't worry, they'll get over it. Your friends seem to be great, since they didn't dump you for being poor or homeless, like a lot of people your age would have done. Also, I wish you and your family the best, and that your situation improves. Not the idiot. You need to get new friends, and if Carla ever talks to you again don't walk away or on. People like them do crap like that as a way to make you feel bad and stay subservient in the friendship. I had a friend just like Carla in high school, and she cut me off after I moved she just reached back out after 6 years because she still thinks I owe her something. Alex should never have pointed it out, if he was so concerned he could have had a word separately about it seems kinda manipulative that he did. My daughter Sally has a dairy allergy. She's been going to the same school since kindergarten, she's 7. For some reason ice cream parties are a common thing there, between birthday treats, holidays, and just random treats they have ice cream a lot. After the first couple times of dealing with an upset kid because she couldn't have any ice cream and everyone else did, I went and talked to the school and asked if I picked up some of those two juice pops that you can freeze whenever, don't know the actual name, if they could give her one of those during their ice cream parties. They agreed and I just drop off more whenever her teacher tells me they're running low or in the beginning of the school year. It's only October and I dropped off a pack of 30 in August which usually lasts all year and she even brings them back home her last day of school. So her teacher emailed me a heads up that there were only three left, seemed strange but I grabbed a pack when I went grocery shopping. So yesterday when I dropped them off with the teacher I jokingly said wow, you guys must have ice cream every other day, wish they did that when I was in school. She said oh, no we've only had ice cream a couple times, but some of the kids saw that Sally had a popsicle they wanted one of those instead. I said yeah, but Sally can't have ice cream, that's why I buy the popsicles. 
She said yes, I understand but it's not really fair that she gets to have a popsicle and the other kids have to have ice cream. I like to encourage sharing and this way Sally will feel good knowing she shared with her classmates. I said again, it's fair because she cannot eat ice cream, the other kids can. If she didn't have a dairy allergy the popsicles wouldn't even be here and fairness didn't seem to be a big deal when all the other kids were getting ice cream and Sally couldn't have anything. She was like well, that was before she was in my class. I basically gave up and left. I was telling my wife and she said, it's just popsicles who cares if some are given away. It's not about the popsicles though, it's that the school didn't care when everyone else got ice cream and Sally couldn't and basically had to sit there and felt left out, but now because she has popsicles it's not fair. This was never an issue before she had this teacher either. I'm going to see how long this bag lasts and then maybe I'll start sending only 10 at a time or something. Am I the idiot for making a big deal over this? Maybe I'm overreacting. Not the idiot. You're paying for this out of your own pocket. What the school is doing is stealing from you. Doesn't matter if they are relatively inexpensive. It would have been one thing had they contacted you in the beginning to ask if it would be okay to give away some popsicles, but they didn't. They need to either reimburse you or stop giving away your stuff. As for kids who may be upset that they don't get a popsicle. Tough. They need to have it explained to them that your kid cannot have ice cream and that these popsicles are brought so she can partake in the fun. The teacher is wrong. Sally shouldn't have to share her popsicles since she can't have ice cream. A seven-year-old should be able to understand that those are special for Sally. It just seems like the teacher is being lazy and not wanting to deal with explaining it to the kids. She should know that the school is paying for the ice cream, you are paying for Sally's popsicles. It's the principle, not the money. Not the idiot. If the school was going to let someone else have your daughter's popsicles, they should have asked. Really, the person bringing the treat or the school, if the school is providing ice cream, should have non-dairy available for students who can't eat dairy products. It's pretty common. But regardless, these were popsicles specifically for her that were provided by you for the sake of convenience, knowing that alternatives would not be provided by anyone else. It's not about the money, but the bad behavior. Have a talk with the principal about this. The teacher is out of line. My husband's sister has three kids ages 8, 7, and 5. She and I have never been the best of friends exactly. She doesn't like my background and I feel like she's a hypocrite because she's raising her kids a similar way. My parents were not good parents and my siblings were unruly. They got into trouble often and were in and out of juvenile detention and jail their whole lives. I was the odd one out in the family. Probably not the most positive person in the world, but I feel like out of all of my siblings I'm the best adjusted. My husband's sister likes to let her kids do what they want. She believes they are gifts from God that have no imperfections, that they can do nothing wrong and nobody can tell them to stop anything or she gets upset and because of that her kids remind me a lot of my siblings. She never wanted me to babysit before until she couldn't keep a babysitter and then she asked me to do it because they were in a tight spot. I said no. My husband told her she should have expected that given how she speaks to and about me. And the fact we're not around each other often. She came to me again and said I should be more family oriented. I told her I would never babysit her kids, so leave it alone. She was outraged, asked me why, I told her because of her kids' behavior and her lack of interest in them being told no. She's pissed and told the whole family what I said. Some are labeling me an idiot. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I suspect it is not so much the children's behavior, but the fact that you are not allowed to set any boundaries, provide discipline, or provide any kind of feedback to the kids to make them manageable for the time that you would have them. I can't imagine willingly walking into that situation, no matter how much I like the parents. You know when they have been blacklisted by all the other babysitters in the area that it would not end well. I pity the children. Not the idiot. You did the right thing in being upfront and honest. If it is causing problems for you with the rest of the family, you and hubby invite his parents to dinner and he starts the conversation to put an end to the gossip. We understand that every parent can choose to raise their kids as they see fit. Wifey comes from a home with kids that were allowed the same freedoms that sister is giving and watch the terrible outcome for most. 
maybe we were wrong in being so blunt and discussing with sister, yet we are no less family orientated for pointing out the kids' poor behavior and knowing our limitations in regards to watching them. With that being said, it is unfair for sister to create division in the family due to this. Not the idiot. The fact that she is unable to keep a babysitter says a lot about her little gifts from God. People love to forget that actions have consequences. So she can choose to raise her children to be unruly little brats if she wants, but the consequence is that no one will be willing to babysit her kids. You are not the idiot. Also it's pretty bold to speak badly about someone and then have the nerve to ask them to watch your kids. I wouldn't worry about other family members being upset. You didn't mention any of them offering to watch her unruly children. Mildred. That's my six-year-old daughter's name. I fought so hard to not have her named that, but my wife was dead set on it. Who even names their kid Mildred anymore? Are we in the 19th century or something? And plus I know how kids are. Sure enough, I picked up my daughter from school today, and usually she's excited when I pick her up, but she was quiet. I kept asking her what was wrong, and when we were almost home, she finally confessed and said that someone in her class had said that her name sounded like a grandma. Basically, old. She said she didn't like her name anymore, and I tried to sympathize by saying, I'm sorry kiddo. Yeah, I never liked your name either. I thought it was a stupid name when I first heard it, but everyone in the family thought it was okay, and I got shot down. But on the bright side, you can change it when you get older. We were in the garage by then, and she looked at me in horror and said, you don't like my name either. And she opened the door, crying, and ran inside before I could catch her. She told her mother that I said her name was stupid, somehow she also forgot to mention the kid in her class who started it, and even after I explained the whole situation to my wife, she was mad and wanted me to apologize. I refused. I said, apologize for what? I don't like the name, I never like the name, and our daughter doesn't even like the name. I was mad at the moment, too, so I walked away, but later I tried to talk to our daughter and ask why she just started crying like that, because I was genuinely confused, still am, to be honest, but all she said was that she wasn't happy at me, and that she didn't want to talk to me right at the moment. I'm not too worried about my daughter because she's six, so she'll probably forget it by tomorrow, or like a week at most, but my wife is really mad at me right now, because she was telling me that I should apologize tomorrow, and I kept saying no. I think she just feels guilty that she named our daughter Mildred, but I'm curious if I'm the idiot here. All I did was agree with my daughter when she said she didn't like her name. I still want an explanation why she just started crying like that. You're the idiot. I still want an explanation why she just started crying like that. Explanation. Because she is six years old, was bullied for her name, something she didn't choose, and needed to be consoled. You failed. Please read a parenting book. Also, consider couples therapy if you and your wife cannot compromise on something as big as naming your child. For what it's worth, you don't have to like the name Mildred. But as a parent you should learn how to better love and care for your daughter, whose name is Mildred. Also, if this becomes an issue when she gets older and she pushes for a name change, let her go by her middle name or Millie. You are the idiot. Your daughter is six. You should be helping explain her emotions to her, not the other way around. You literally have less emotional intelligence than a six-year-old. You should be ashamed of yourself. To insist, after being told dozens of times that you were wrong and owe your daughter an apology, that you actually won't apologize unless your daughter continues to be emotionally braver than you and continues to directly confront and explain to her own authority figure why your bullying makes her feel bad. You should be so embarrassed.